Hello, I'm Eve Howard. Welcome to Diversity Wales and the Wood Wide Web. This is my opportunity to show you around this gallery. And we're going to start with Gallery Room 1, Earth Woman. Earth Woman represents biodiversity within diversity. She is a composite part of the earth and people and the relationship, communication and conflict that occurs within the ecosystem. This painting started out as a tree and the roots relating to the connectedness between and above the earth and Earth Woman evolved out of that picture. Earth Woman is a representation of the relationship between humanity and the earth. People are part of complex relationships and communicate with one another in diverse ways. And nature has that same relationship. There is an interconnectedness and communication between all living things. Earth Woman, she represents diversity in her look. Hair and face and different physical features are part of things that represent the global community and the planet. We are now in room two, Wall of Trees. The Wall of Trees features local trees that are found in so many different settings. They grow and survive in so many different situations, sometimes hostile conditions, but they still spring forth with life. This first tree it fascinated me. The central wooden core became like a visionary window from which to look through to the other side. Within it, there was shapes and carvings that looked like organs of the human body. There were knuckles, like features of a hand or a foot, and shapes almost of people interacting. This is gallery number three, the woodlands. All of these photographs were taken in local West Wales woodlands and they represent peaceful, mindful moments in time. How do these heavily canopied trees remain rooted in the ground with little support in between the top knot, trunk and root system? In the woodlands and between clutches of trees in urban or rural settings, the branches of some trees lean in towards one another. They appear interlinked and interleaved in a labyrinth of canopies connected by long winding root-like tendrils. These sinewy strands lock tightly around host forestation, forming part of a substructural support system. This elaborate climbing frame fixture supports the diversity of plant life as it attaches and fastens itself firm. Knotty dread root-like extensions wind, wrap and weave themselves in intricate lattice patterns as part of a botanic tapestry of fungal growth and connective tissue. Is tendril attachment part of nature's complex design system of structural support surrounding stricken or ailing trees? Recently, I have been delving deeper into the phenomenon of trees, fungi, mycelium and their integration within the whole ecosystem of the wood wired web. This phenomenon is known as mycelium, part of a hidden underground natural network. As each tree and plant completes its life cycle, it breaks down into another form, providing energy, support and other essential building blocks for new growth to continue. I became fascinated by fungi as they developed in their different stages. I looked for traces of them and found them in all shapes and sizes and in the rotting, broken parts of tree growth. And sometimes when a tree looked like it had come to the end of a lifespan, there was new growth and fungi emerging. 
and the spas spread and spread and it was just a delight to see all the colours and shapes and sizes. These photographs, I took most of them during the lockdown. As I walked along the footsteps in the sand, I lost count of time. It just stopped and everything was still and quiet. But I enjoy going to the beach in all weathers, even in the winter when the sand whips up into my face. I feel alive as I brace myself against it. This is room six and it is my jellyfish room. I find jellyfish absolutely fascinating. I enjoy looking at the colours and their shapes and their transparency and sometimes I think they resemble human faces. This is room seven, rolling rivers and it's one of my favourite local walks and it's a fascinating view. It changes over the seasons. I really enjoy taking people along this pathway with me where we explore early in the morning and there's hardly anyone about but it's just so peaceful. You can hear your footsteps as you walk along the pathway and listen and look at the colours around and it's just so um, inspirational. Roommate flood. Well, this is again to do with water and it makes us think about climate change and how devastating it can be for people and the situations where water runs riot. I've noticed the subtle shifts over time and the changes that occur. Room number nine. These are photographs taken in the local environment. There are two videos. The first one is to do with birds of prey at the botanical gardens and uh, an, a memorable moment when the birds flew straight at me. And the other one is about equilibrium and finding balance in life in these difficult times. Room 10 is photographs of mainly wildflowers. I find the simplest things that just grow, grow anywhere, mesmerizing. Their beauty and their colors are startling. And mindful moments. The photograph on the left is a colorized photograph of washing up bubbles. The poem next to it from that moment of washing bubbles in the sink and the peace and calm that swept through me as I became one with the warmth of the water solution and the shapes that changed in front of me as I washed each cup and plate. What you're looking at now is a painting of the local woodlands and a separate photograph of a bird box that I painted. There is also a poem accompanying this and it is about my time as a child when I would escape into the peaceful daydreams of yesteryear and that calmness and serenity of walking and resting and being within nature pulling out my pen my pencil and just writing on what I saw the calmness and serenity that came with this I hope I've captured here This is room 11. I call it resilience, vulnerability and self-actualization. Quite a mouthful. Um, the first image is a wooden block and I use ropes across the face to actually represent people who are feeling contained in any way and feeling trapped. And the centre rope, I leave it loose and hanging to give the suggestion that things can change and we could positively transform things. This piece reflects the challenges and constraints in the unfolding journey towards freedom, empowerment and self-actualization. 
It's about the flight to freedom and the struggles of vulnerable people. And it specifically relates to us in our times of now. Many people feel isolated and alone and caught within a time and space. And we all search for ways to manage and deal with these situations and support one another along the pathway. Both these photographs of paintings are self-portraits. They're me at times in space. The one on the right encapsulates the forest and the colors and life and wildlife, but also the strains and constraints that we all experience. Well, this is the end of the tour around this gallery. And I hope we can all engage and have discussions and talk about ways forward. Bye for now.